All right, welcome back. And we also say welcome back to Mike Apple. Nice to see you. Hello, good morning. How are you doing? Good to have you back. You uh, enjoyed Thank some you. days off. Well deserved. Yeah. Yeah. My birthday yesterday. I heard. I heard. Did, did you see that on social media? I tried to keep it quiet, but people just would not let it be. So, no. You can't what keep are you secrets do? these days. <laughs> it's, it was nice. We got a little go away to Niagara on the Lake. It was a nice little break. When is, by the way, when is Festivus? Is Festivus coming up? I was thinking, what, what's the next big celebration? Uh, in Hanukkah. Festivus yes, has yes. got to be close. So, isn't Festivus just all the time? It theoretically it should be. It should be. <laughs> All right, Mike, lots to catch up on. Uh, the markets have yes. been going wild. Yes, they sure have. Um, and, you know, every headline about the Omicron variant uh, causes big price swings, specifically in the travel and tourism industry. We've seen this uh, over the past couple of days where the airlines get hit, the cruise lines, the hotels. That sector is sort of the barometer for expectations about global travel, obviously. And the energy trade is the barometer for um, the global economic growth forecast. So we've seen huge price swings in oil one day way down. We saw that big uh, price drop at the pumps over the weekend. And yesterday was another sell off for oil back up again this morning. And this is kind of the uh, the pattern we're into right now, Melanie, with daily moves and substantial uh, swings. The Dow yesterday was down 650 points. TSX down 400 plus, which was more than 2%. And the energy and bank stocks and gold shares, they were all down. Back up, though, this morning, I will tell you the Dow futures contract is looking at a gain of about 330 points. So this morning, things look better. Another thing that was key to the market performance yesterday uh, as well was the talk by U.S. Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell saying they might have to pull back on economic stimulus sooner rather than later. But then you've got a uh, COVID variant. And, and it's again, it's, you know, <laughs> every headline moves things. One thing they think they're going to pull back and the next thing, you know, the economy slows down and then mm -hmm. the economic stimulus continues. So who knows? <laughs> who knows? That's I guess the that's the best way you can, can put do. it. Okay. The best way you can put uh, it right now. What we do know, Mike, when it comes yes. to these EV charging stations, we had this conversation yes. offline um, mm -hmm. and, and thought that maybe they were already in place at en route stations in the province. Not the case, but they're coming. Yeah, this is an announcement coming from the province uh, this morning. And uh, the plan to put electric vehicle charging stations at 17 out of 23 en route locations on the 401 and the 400 and apparently they're going to be in by uh, next summer which is good i was kind of surprised and thought oh yeah there aren't any ev cha uh, charging bays at those on routes which would be kind of a natural fit uh, you would think but it's not actually going to see any provincial money it's a it's a opg and hydro one i think are the the backers of this so the whole idea about electric vehicles, range anxiety, that sort of thing. You'll have these charging bays installed. It'll be interesting to see, though, Melanie, how many are going in. Uh, they start. I think they're starting with two uh, per location, maybe more. But, you know, how long do you have to sit there to charge up your vehicle to any great extent? That's, mm -hmm. and that's That, of course, is of go going to be the thing that uh, the electric car market has to get used to is the amount of time it takes to charge and where the charging bays are are actually available that's for longer it. distance traveling. And that's what the 401 and 400 are all about. Absolutely, Mike. Uh, we've run out of time, yeah. but we've got to get to the maple syrup story. Yes. What's going on? Uh, the Quebec government or Quebec maple syrup industry is releasing maple syrup from the strategic reserve. Yeah, there's one for oil. There's one for maple syrup. They keep these in drums someplace. And we're talking uh, millions of pounds of maple syrup. A lot of this is going to the U.S. market. Melanie, the harvest last year was... Uh, Average to below normal just because of the weather, but maple syrup demand is up 21% over the past year. So more demand, not quite as much supply. The, the Quebec uh, uh, maple syrup industry trying to stabilize the market a little bit. It's got all sorts of antioxidants in it. It's great for you. And yes, I am a fan of maple syrup. Um, Mike, you mentioned <laughs> while you were away that it was your birthday, and we, I was just yes. going to ignore it. We were going to ignore no, it, but no. we can't ignore your birthday because, Mike, we found this beautiful picture of you. Yes. Uh, from your, yeah, there, look at you. Amazing. Yeah. See? Right? Happy birthday, that, Mike. Happy belated. It's, it's, almost, it's almost lifelike. <laughs> it, that's actually a really good, that's Brian Hoare from awesome. our graphics department. That does look like it could be you, doesn't that's it? That's awesome. On board of John Deere. <laughs> Total, of course. All or right. Massey Ferguson. Shout out, shout out to Massey Ferguson as well. <laughs> Have yourself an amazing belated birthday, Mike. Hopefully it's, uh, it's relaxed. 
Thanks. All right. We're going to take a quick break here on BT. We'll see you after this.